What did Dominic post to Twitter here? A cheap four on V0. How cheap? That can't be right. Really? That little? I guess I gotta order one. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, you've uttered the famous last words, our intrepid protagonist. How bad could it be? What's the worst that could happen? You're gonna find out real soon, young man. Real soon. This is my Voron V0.1, a 3D printer that I built for myself earlier this year. That's one of the things about a Voron. If you want one, you don't call up Voron Design and order one. You have to build it yourself. And there are two ways of going about this. Self-sourcing, where you pick out all the individual components to get exactly what you want. That's what I did here. Or you can order a kit. These kits are pre-assembled setups of all the components you need to build a Voron for yourself. And inside of this cardboard box is not only the cheapest, but the most complete Voron V0 kit that I have seen on the market. But is it worth it? In this video, we're gonna answer that question. We're gonna see what parts come in this kit. We are going to build it and we are gonna get it printing to see how good it is or isn't. There are timestamps down below if you want to jump to the unboxing or assembly or any portions of this video, by the way. As of filming this video, this thing is on AliExpress for $297.60. Shipped with tax included to Philadelphia here in the Eastern US, it cost me $4.22 and some change. If you're not familiar with building a Voron, you usually have to print your own parts to assemble the machine out of ASA or ABS. Now, if you're somebody who's coming up in 3D printing, you're learning, you're trying to grow, it's quite likely that you're not gonna have machines capable of printing ABS or ASA either safely or well. Normally, you would have to use either the Print It Forward program where other Voron owners can print the parts for you so you can at least get your machine functional and be able to print your own cosmetic parts for your build, or you'd have to upgrade some of your machines and trial and error your way into printing ABS or ASA for this build. So the value add of having the printed parts all ready to go in this kit, unbox it and build it, is kind of hard to ignore, except for one glaring problem. Let's start unboxing these parts and then the problem should stick out pretty quickly. I am initial impressions really impressed with the packaging going on inside of this box. All of our parts are coming in this open cell foam all organized, cut out sections so they're separated nicely, not just haphazardly thrown into the box or anything like that. The first two foam trays that come out of the box are our hardware kit, our mini afterburner shroud, fans, stepper motors, IEC connector. This weird little package we'll come back to in a second. The printed parts are in this really nice organized tray, as well as some loose ones and these weird little stickers, which bring us to the glaring problem I mentioned before. When buying a kit that already has printed parts in it, you don't get to pick the color scheme beyond whatever's available in the store. When I ordered this kit, this was the only color option the store had available. This silver and kind of toothpaste teal seafoam color scheme, which I actually personally like, but you may not. They do have black and red now available, but again, that wasn't available when I ordered this. Nobody else is selling a full complete kit with printed parts, so I really wasn't sure what print quality to expect on the parts that I was getting. However, I am pleasantly surprised, and overall the print quality is better than I anticipated. What about that weird little travel case that I mentioned before? Well, this is your travel hot end. This hot end is odd and more than just its presentation. In the parts list, it's listed as an E3D V6 clone. You've got the distinctive aluminum heatsink. It does come with a bimetallic heat brake, an aluminum heater block, and a basic 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle. Except it has a bolt pattern mounting on the top of it instead of a groove mount like a regular E3D V6 would. I measured, and as best I can tell, the bolt spacing matches that of a Fetus Dragon hot end. The ad on AliExpress lists 250 millimeter a second print speeds for this kit, which a Voron V0 is absolutely capable of if it has a hot end that can keep up. I understand the choice, but I worry this is gonna be a limiting factor when it comes to the speed that this machine can achieve. We're gonna to have to test to figure that out. Underneath the foam trays that contain the hardware and the printed parts is an electronics one, which has some of the wiring, the main board, the motors, and it even includes a soldering iron, I assume for inserting the heat inserts, whether or not they, I need to do those, I'm not sure yet. 
and a crimping tool to crimp our own ends, but that tells me we're gonna have to crimp our own ends and this harness isn't fully built already. The main board they chose to use in this kit is one of the ways I see them saving some expense here. I'm not faulting them for that though. This is the Mellow Fly Gemini. This is what I would call an all-in-one board. Half of it is your regular 3D printer main board, and the other half is a clone of a Raspberry Pi. With how expensive and difficult it is to get Raspberry Pis right now, this is an excellent option to include in this kit so folks can run Clipper firmware as most people do with a Voron. The only written instructions in the box is this wiring diagram, which Overall, I'm fairly impressed by, but until I actually wire all of this up, I can't say whether or not it's really that good. Our A and B motors, AKA X and Y, are completely unnamed, unlabeled, no part number, no manufacturer name, nothing. Just some generic NEMA 14s. One of the places it's clear they cut some expense is the bed that they included. This is a piece of three millimeter thick aluminum plate with a 50 watt, 24 volt bed heater PCB on the back side of it. Whoa! Alan from the future here. That is actually not a 50 watt bed heater. Turns out I needed to peel the tape back a little further so I could enter this zone and discover that it's a 150 watt bed heater. I didn't think to look for the one in front of the five because this is so overkill and so out of spec for the Voron V0, but it just doesn't make any sense. We will double back around to this because it caused me legitimate problems running this machine and it could cause long-term problems for the bed if it's not addressed. I'll show you how to address it later on in the video. So back to the parts. The spec for a Voron V0 is a cast aluminum bed that is five to six millimeters thick and a 60 watt bed heater. So this is outside of the spec and definitely one way that they cut some cost here. They also included instead of a regular spring steel PEI sheet, one of these like rubbery sheets you see on a Creality printer. So another cost saving measure there. Our next tray is our frame components, our linear rails and power supply unit. Oddly versus the other cost saving measures in this kit, the power supply they included is the proper 150 watt, 24 volt mean well power supply that the build materials for the Voron V0 calls for. And the last thing in the box is the panels, some VHB tape and a little bit of cable chain. With the highlights of the parts out of the way, it's time to start building this machine. This is not gonna be a full build video showing you step-by-step step how to do this, but I am gonna stop and call out if I have any issues or any tips or tricks that I think are important to building this machine. I said I would stop and chime in when I found issues with this kit. Well, I found some pretty glaring ones with the frame portion of things. The biggest one is that this extrusion right here, they sent me an incorrect one. It needs holes that pass through it so I can tighten some of the fasteners. As such, this corner currently of the frame doesn't have an extrusion that I can use. I'm gonna have to drill my own holes into this to make it work. I almost feel like I'm okay with them not putting the holes in here because almost all of the other holes that are in these extrusions are in the wrong places. There's like six or eight extrusions that are supposed to have holes 7.5 millimeters away from the end of the extrusion so that you can pass a hex wrench through there and tighten fasteners. But they're all like eight to 8.5 millimeters, meaning I need to use a ball hex and go at an angle to tighten those fasteners, which is not how it's supposed to be. With that, I need to keep working, so I'm gonna go put some holes in this extrusion. I don't really feel like clearing a path to my drill press at the moment, so I just drilled these holes by hand. They don't need to be that precise for this situation, just more precise than the kit originally came with would be nice. I've discovered something really interesting inside of this kit. You remember when I was mentioning the hot end and how it was not a very high flow hot end? Well, I pulled the nozzle out of it to put some thermal paste on it, and I realized that we have a knockoff CHT nozzle. I didn't know anybody was making any of these, but here we have it, a CHT-like nozzle. You can see it has the three paths splitting the filament path once it hits the nozzle. Comparing this to a real CHT nozzle, you can see that the CHT really does a better job of splitting the filament up through those separate paths. So I think that the CHT is definitely going to perform better than this thing. Now I need to get this build wrapped up so we can get this machine printing and test this nozzle because I am really curious. One more thing about this hot end, I don't want to keep harping on this, but when it's mounted inside of the hot end shroud, it hits the 3007 fan that's supposed to be cooling it, which means it's likely going to heat that fan up and shorten its lifespan. 
The heat sink on this has the same outside diameter as a Fadus Dragon, but the Fadus Dragon has four flat spot kind of spaces, cutouts in it that allow for clearance in a situation like this, where this just doesn't. And after painstakingly wiring this thing, I present to you the cheapest Voron V0 kit assembled. Thank you to Rushmere 3D, by the way, for hooking me up with a link to the assembly manual for this specific kit because they didn't provide any URL, no QR code, nothing in the box that would point me to where to find those instructions. Before we get deep into the discussion about this machine, I want to put a little disclaimer here. I purchased this kit. I bought it off AliExpress with my own money. This is a retail product that they are putting out there. I am critiquing it and reviewing it from that perspective. There's a lot to discuss with this thing, so let's just dive right in and start off with what I think is a headline feature here, the printed parts included with this kit. The print settings for printing Voron parts are very specific, and the parts are designed with those print settings in mind to achieve the proper clearance and tolerances in the parts. A lot of the parts are over extruded, especially the mint green colored parts. Where this really showed up for me is the fans going into the afterburner housing. The tolerances on those are tight. They are meant to just basically press fit into place. And because this is over extruded, they were a very tight fit. I ended up shaving the inside of the afterburner housing to get the fans to fit into it. But the one part cooling fan, I just could not get in all the way where it's supposed to be. So you can actually see it's shifted back from its opening just a little bit. And it's actually just rubbing on the housing, which creates this fun noise. The mini afterburner was the only place that it really showed the issue with this over extrusion. I noted it in other places, other printed parts, but that was the only one where it affected the overall machine. The rest of them is acceptable that that's just how they are. It comes with the printed parts to install the acrylic side panels onto this machine, but it comes with acrylic side panels that are not the Voron spec. So as such, you don't need the printed parts. You just got a small pile of wasted ABS at the end of this. There's also another issue here because since these side panels are not the Voron spec, they don't provide enough hardware to put this machine together. The nuts, bolts, screws, hardware that they include with this kit comes in this nice little tray box. I really like this. In fact, I like it so much, it's actually the exact same kit that I bought from Fabrico back when I built my original 0.1. It's just got a different label on the outside of it. I used what was provided to me and put the screws where the instructions told me to put them and I was short by like a dozen M3 by six screws. As far as the actual wiring itself is concerned on this project, there are a handful of things to discuss. The limit switches, all three of them came with wires already soldered and heat shrinked onto them and connectors on the other end, except those limit switches had two pin connectors on the ends of them. It needed three pin. It felt completely backwards to have the connectors on there at all since they weren't the right connectors for the project. I would have rather they just came with unterminated wires. Now it's time to talk about that 150 watt PCB heater bed in here. There are probably plenty of Jeremy Clarksons out there thinking more power. But the thing is, when you're specking electronics, getting the right balance matters. Originally, the Voron V0 came with a 120 volt 100 watt bed heater on it. And it would actually allow the bed to heat up so rapidly that it could cause the bed to warp over time from the rapid cooling and heating cycles. This 150 watt unit has multiple implications. The bed on here is only three millimeters thick. That's including the PCB. So what's gonna happen to this little three millimeter bed over time? This machine only has a 150 watt power supply in it, and it's got a 150 watt bed, leaving no power left for the hot end, which is a 50 watt heater cartridge, by the way, the main board, the fans, the motors, none of it. The way I discovered all of this was when I finally got this machine up and running and I was ready to run a print, I started heating the hot end and the bed at the same time as I do on my other V0 all the time, and this machine shut off. So I hooked up a kilowatt and I started testing this machine. I found the overall system load when heating just the bed from dead cold to 100 degrees Celsius was upwards of 160 to 170 watts. 
we're already 20 watts over what the mean well power supply is rated for. And I think the only saving grace is that it's a good quality power supply, so it probably has some wiggle room built into it. When I started heating the hot end after the bed had already started a little bit, so it maybe wasn't at the full 160, 170 watt draw, the entire unit was pulling 220 watts from the wall. 70 watts over the mean well's rated limit, and I'm amazed it didn't trip over current protection which is what was happening earlier when the machine was shutting down. It was pulling too much power and the power supply shut it all down because it was too much. And I really worry that that's not gonna burn out eventually, especially when you consider the wiring diagram calls for a thermal fuse to be installed on the bed, but they don't include one with the kit because there's nowhere to mount it on the PCB heater. And beyond that, the default config that they provided with this machine, with no adjustments by me, allowed the bed to heat to 200 degrees Celsius. I didn't even bother trying this because it was not going to be a good time. You have every right to disagree with me, but I feel like all of these factors added together, what they are providing to people, has the potential to be a fire hazard in the wrong hands. My config file for this machine limits the bed power to 40%, so 60 watts. It's gonna take longer to heat up, but it'll prevent it from warping immediately and make it safer to operate. I also limited the maximum bed temperature to 125 degrees Celsius, because on this bed, you're just not going to be printing 200 degrees anytime soon. As far as the frame itself is concerned, it's fine. The coating on the extrusions is maybe thinner than some other ones. I used an AliExpress Funzor or whatever kit for my original V0, and I didn't scratch it nearly as much as I scratched this one. The misalignment of those holes was almost a showstopper at a couple of points here. They claim they have corrected that already, but who knows how many of the kits with the misaligned holes are still sitting on their shelves. And then that one extrusion where it just didn't have any holes in it. For a less experienced builder, for somebody who wasn't confident to drill their own holes or didn't have the ability to do so, that would be a full stop to your build until you could get in touch with them, get them to send you the replacement piece or a whole new frame kit, you'd be stuck. And when I brought up all of these frame issues to them in their Discord, yeah, they mentioned that they had fixed the misalignment of the holes, but they actually never offered anything to me for that one extrusion that was totally wrong and I had to drill. I don't know if they missed that I said that, but they didn't offer to send me a new one, nothing. At this point, it's together, I don't need them to, but it raised my eyebrow a little bit that they didn't offer. Our last part to really discuss is the hot end. As far as flow rate is concerned, I do intend to test that knockoff CHT nozzle further, but this hot end assembly with that nozzle, I only hit what I would expect a genuine E3D V6 with a regular style nozzle to hit, somewhere right around 12 millimeters per second cubed. For your reference, I printed the exact same G code on my other V0 that has a Betus Dragon high flow hot end, a genuine Bontex CHT nozzle, and LGX light extraction extruder on it, and that put out about 36 millimeters per second flow rate, about triple what this budget setup did. Don't take that as me dunking on this setup. The only factor here that I have issue with is that the marketing material says 250 millimeter per second print speeds with this machine, but in reality, you're gonna be flow rate limited by that hot end and nozzle combination. I printed a Benchy to see how quickly I could do it and push this thing. I set the speed on the infill and inner perimeters to 250 millimeter per second speeds to match the claims for this machine, but I left the volumetric flow rate at the 12 millimeter per second that I found this hot end can push. That Benchy printed in 43 minutes using Polymaker ASA, same as the flow rate tests used, and it hit a maximum of 125 millimeter per second speed, half of the claims for this machine. If you're not familiar, the reason for that is the slicer will limit your speed to maintain the volumetric flow rate that you set. It was limited to 12 millimeters per second, the what this hot end can put out, so the slicer would not allow it to go over 125 millimeters per second because that's all this could achieve. However, I kind of like the choice of hot end here, including a hot end that is so budget, so basic, but has the same bolt pattern as a Fetus Dragon in it, allows a direct upgrade path without wasting money on a more premium hot end that only would have been marginally better. I think with all that, it's time to discuss my thoughts on this kit as a whole. 
You'll notice I didn't really talk about print quality. That's really gonna come down to the amount of time you put into it. Slicer tuning, the filament you're using, the firmware tuning you do to get better quality. I have only done three prints with this machine so far because I only really intended to ensure that the parts you're getting work and that out of the box you can print with this because this machine is going to be what you make of it. And that's what's gonna come with a machine like this. And that's a factor that needs to be considered. Being the cheapest Voron kit out there and the most complete one, I see this as a kit that people who weren't ready to build a Voron might end up buying to build a Voron. But you need to realize there's still firmware setup to do, still tweaking and tuning you're gonna have to do. And it's still going to be a more advanced build than just putting together an Ender 3 or a Prusa out of a box. I think the only true selling point of this kit is that it comes with the printed parts. If you just have to have a kit with printed parts, I know of no other one out there. But if it's the budget price that you're really looking at, $2.99 on AliExpress, sure. But to my door, it was $4.22. I can jump onto Formbot's website, and for $4.19, I can get a V0 kit with stainless steel linear rails, a Fetus Dragon high flow hot end, the proper cast aluminum bed, PEI sheet, and proper 60 watt bed heater, all for the same price, just without printed parts. I would honestly say if budget is your goal, get the Formbot kit, go through the Print It Forward program to get the printed parts. You'll be able to pick your color scheme and you'll end up with probably a better quality machine for about the same money. The absolute only reason I see to get this is the printed parts. And even then I've already noted there's some issues with those. So if you just truly don't wanna to have to go through any other means of getting the printed parts or printing them yourself, this kit exists, and there'll be an affiliate link in the description down below if you want to ignore what I've said. And that is the Seabor Voron V0, the cheapest and most complete kit on the market that I just don't recommend you buy. I really went into this hoping this was going to be a good kit, and I was only left disappointed. There will be links in the description down below to the components and hardware that I've mentioned in this video. Most of those are affiliate links. I appreciate it if you use them. They don't cost you anything more, but they do help me in production of videos like this because I have a Voron V0, but I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with now. I'm definitely going to be testing that budget CHT nozzle deeper, especially compared to a genuine one. Probably put it into my Dragon Hot End. If you want to catch that, get subscribed to keep up to date with everything. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please drop it a like. It really helps out. Let me know in the comments. Is everything I said in here completely worthless and you're gonna buy one of these things anyway? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below and be sure to get subscribed so your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt.